But I just wanted you to think about what you did this weekend, about how social it was. Did you have people over? Did you go somewhere else? Did you do something as social as I did? Well, guess what? The reality for an awful lot of people is they don't do it just because simply it is too expensive. It still remains the number one issue, cost of living, that we talk about almost every night because there are people amongst us who are truly suffering and the government pretends to have a solution when all they are doing is distracting from the things they could do. Now, Jane Hume and her cost of living inquiry has been travelling the country and doing excellent work bringing out stories of how people are hurting. Some of those people give evidence, other people just write letters or give what's called a written submission to those inquiries. And I've got to say, well done to the ABC, or at least the reporters here who are relentlessly going through those documents because they're making it the same story that we have been talking about for the best part of two years. Let's start with a woman living in regional Australia and why she doesn't leave her house. Lindy Kay used to enjoy a meal at the bowling club once a week would often go to meet up with girlfriends in a town in town for morning tea. Nowadays, the 74-year-old has more or less stopped going out altogether. Now, anyone who knows how much it is to get to lunch at a bolo or coffee with your friends in, the, in uh, regional Australia, it's not that expensive. It still celebrates the place of the $5 steak and the cheaper middies than everywhere else, but still... Due to the cost of living pressures, she only leaves her house for essentials and goes on long stretches of time without social interactions. Quote, I don't go to the movies, I don't go out for dinner, I don't go to the pub. I used to love going out. I've had to get used to the isolation. Now, as we've talked about before, now this doesn't matter whether you're in the city and your partner has passed away, whether you are in the suburbs and you've always lived alone, whether you live in regional Australia and, again, all of those things happen, or, in this case, you don't have enough money to go into town, the consequences of social isolation become huge. There are parts of the world, including the UK, that have ministries for loneliness because of what it does to people, what it does to our fellow family members. Now, for obvious reasons, all of us are reminded even after big social occasions like mine this weekend or whatever you did this weekend, is that you've always got to reach out to the people who you know are living by themselves. Not just because they are living by themselves, but because it's our job to remind everyone we know how much we love them. Because when you spend more time by yourself, more time in your own thoughts, then things can turn very nasty very quickly. Now, one of the key questions that keeps coming up in the people who've been writing to this committee of politicians to tell them about their cost of living situations relentlessly is the issue that I am obsessed with, which is the cost of petrol and the role in which the federal government is in the tax in the cost of petrol. Remember, when this government came to power, it was 23 cents a litre and now they've whacked it up to 49 cents a litre. And despite the fact that they can control the tax that goes into the car via petrol, that is the difference between some people being able to travel at all to do anything social, these are the things the government could do, but they still continuously, relentlessly say, perhaps because it's an idea we talk about on this program, forgive me for being not quite modest, but maybe that's why they're not doing it. Well, I don't care if that's if they hate where the idea is coming from. The idea remains central. It's not going to change inflation. People don't go and buy extra fuel. They still drive as far as they drive, but a slightly cheaper amount of petrol would mean that some people who are right on the edge will be able to do things, like the lady in regional Australia, to be able to maybe have a little bit of extra money to put into the car to be able to go and see a friend for a cup of tea once a week. Huge differences to people's lives. It doesn't really matter for the people at the front end of the plane whose life's always really busy and their phone's always going on and, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it's been three months since I returned your text. But people deserve social interaction. One of the ways they can do it is if this government cuts petrol tax. Further examples here. That many of the city com uh, city many Senate committee submissions cited petrol costs as the reason for cutting back on activities. One respondent even admitted to taking days off work because they couldn't afford to run their car. So they're not working from home like a federal or state government bureaucrat. These are people who, because they don't have enough money to put fuel in the car, they don't go and earn more money by going to work.
Many say they can only travel if it's necessary and are sacrificing visiting loved ones, back to our first situation. People have gone years without seeing their family. So forgive me if I say it again, but I do not believe the Prime Minister, his champions in the media or the people who prop him up when they say they are doing everything they can on cost of living. This is what they tell you. We work each and every day to do more. That's the focus of the government. Then cut petrol tax. Do it tomorrow. Give people the ability to save a dollar here or there so they can leave their house and see their family and friends. Yes, it is that dire for some people. But the Prime Minister, despite the written evidence, the human evidence that we show you, and the common sense that should be there in their heart, completely deftly.